Bronx. The Bronx. The Bronx. I love it. I'm in I'm in Brooklyn, so we're not too far from each other. Nice. Well, I am super excited. Super, super, super excited to get started. I'm so glad you guys are here. Thank you so much for joining us on this. Well, we're all, from diff we're all from all over different time zones. So I'm just gonna say on this Thursday, you take with that what you will, what time zone you're in. <laughs> so thank you for joining us on this Thursday. And let's get started. All right. So welcome everyone to um, the CE webinar. It is focused on ergonomics for the dental hygienist. I myself am, oh, hold on, let's get my screen share going. There we go. I myself am also a hygienist. My name is Anika Forbes. I am a clinically trained and licensed dental hygienist with 15 years of experience. I am also a, a dental hygiene and dental assisting educator at New York University, as well as an executive director of Hashtag Lunchbag Brooklyn, which is a nonprofit organization and I started a few years ago, which is focused on food insecurity and illiteracy in marginalized communities. I also recently acquired a role as associate manager of community oral health for Colgate's Bright Smiles, Bright Futures North America program. And as a an hygienist, as an educator, I am passionate about making sure that the future professions of Danish, of um, the future professionals of dentistry become the best versions of themselves, not only for themselves as clinicians, but also for the patients that they serve. And I am a proud member of uh, Brown Girl RDH, which is a nonprofit geared in helping dental hygiene students become the best dental hygienists that they can be out in the world. I have some photos up here for you guys to peruse. And then the, the best of this photo is my 13 year old dog Taffy. She's amazing. She really doesn't do anything but sleep and eat. I'm considering charging her rent because that's what she's doing right now. Really considering charging her rent because this is this is ridiculous. We've been living together for 13 years and she has not ponied up a penny for rent or mortgage. I need I need, I need a new roommate. So let's talk about why we're here today. So ergonomics, let me just get this out of the way, sorry. There we go. Ergonomics is the applied science concerned with the fit between dental hygienists and our work environment, which is an ever-present topic. The minute we sit in a chair, we're trying to figure out what, what clock position am I in? Is my neck bent? Where am I going? Who am I, where am I turning? Why is my arm so high? Why is my shoulder hurting? Everything. We go through it all the minute we sit in a chair. So we want to continuously guide dental hygienists on a career path longevity. And that's what this webinar is designed to do. It's designed to reintroduce you to the principles of ergonomics, okay? We're going to talk about the fundamentals of ergonomics, the negative effects of improper ergonomics, factors to teach our patients, and chair-side stretches that are going to help us prevent some of these MSDs, musculoskeletal disorders that are common in our profession. One thing I tell my students all the time is that you are dealing with a human being, not a mannequin. They can move. They can turn their head right to left. All you have to do is ask. So that's one thing that we're definitely going to talk about, okay? Our course objectives. We're going to discuss concepts and goals related to ergonomic practice. Identify factors that contribute to ergonomic dental hygiene practice explain any of the ergonomic risk factors for clinical practice, describe the components of ergonomic practice and a relationship to career longevity. We're gonna describe the elements of neutral working position and moving forward, that'll be um, known as NWP. We're gonna review the musculoskeletal disorders, the causes and symptoms that are most often associated with our practice. And we're going to demonstrate the exercises that can help reduce muscle fatigue and strengthen muscles, including some exercises to reduce eye and neck strain. 
also I'll definitely repeat it again if we have anyone else who's joined us afterwards. Please feel free to introduce yourself into the chat where you're where you're where you're um, tuning in from. And also, if there are any questions or comments, please feel free to put those in the chat. We will be having a Q&A at the end of the webinar. So someone is monitoring the chat if you do have questions. So ergonomics, the applied science concerned with the fit between people and technological tools and environment. In our practice, body positioning is an essential component for proper periodontal instrumentation. Ergonomics include positioning of the dental equipment, the clinician, and the human patient who is not a Dexter who can move. Scope of ergonomic dental hygiene includes all practices that make work safe, decrease strain and fatigue, eliminates hazards, and improve the work process affecting the health and well-being of the clinician and the patient. Ergonomics focuses on making tax comfortable and efficient for user by allowing equipment to fit the user instead of forcing our wonderful bodies to fit the equipment. The physical challenges inherent in dental hygiene practice place us at risk for developing work-related MSDs. And prevention begins with the recognition of risk factors that can point to potential body injury and more serious permanent musculoskeletal disorders. We are too plentiful to walk around broken. We just, we can't do it. We, it, we cannot do it. It cannot happen for us. So we have got to go back into our Rolodex of what we learned when we were first babies out of hygiene school and bring that back to make sure that we are practicing proper ergonomics. So the neutral working position, let's get right into it. The objectives of NWP concern the health of the clinician the service that you're performing and the effect on the patient. If you're not in your proper ergonomic condition, I'm sorry, position, you're not providing optimal oral care for your patient. If you know that that piece of calculus that is on the distal of tooth number 16, we got to get it because y'all know if we are hygienists or type A, that distal 16 that piece of calculus, we are, go we are going for it. It does not matter, we get in it. But the question is how, we, how are we going to get it? We can't compromise our neutral working position to attack that piece of calculus. And if anybody knows when you have a patient that has all of those wisdom teeth, we say a silent prayer like, oh God, please don't let there be anything on the distal. And lo and behold, what's happening? It's right there, it's on the distal. So we're going for it, we're going for it. It's just, how are we gonna get it? We wanna make sure that we maintain our neutral working position. So the preferred neutral position attempts to accomplish the following, contribute to and preserve rather than detract from our health and wellness, contribute to ease and efficacy of performance that encourages patient cooperation, allow endurance for prolonged peak of efficiency. The more we are maintaining our NWP, the longer we can work. It reduces potential for overexertion and injury from mental and physical stress, as well as fatigue. If your body's not feeling it, it translates into the type of care you're, you're um, giving and also your mental fatigue. And it gives the patient a sense of well being, security, and confidence. It makes them feel a little bit more relaxed knowing that you're not crouching tiger, hidden dragon over their face, right? We want to make sure that we secure career longevity by maintaining our neutral working position. So let's talk about our body parts. Yeah. Where should things be? Where should our body parts be? Our head should be on top of the neutral spine with forward flexion between zero to 15 degrees. Our eyes directed downward to prevent any neck and eye strain. Okay. We don't want to be multitasking, which Hygienist, you know, we good for that. Our back in neutral alignment with the natural spine curvature. 
Shoulders relax in parallel with hips on the floor. Walking around, I mean, if you live in New York, you're you just like this. Like New Yorkers, we literally look like this all the time because New York is just stress. It's so so many people all the time. So we have to bring those shoulders down. We want to keep our elbows close to our body. All right. No chicken wings. No, we're not flying away. No flies. Our forearms should be parallel to the floor. Our wrists are in a straight line with the forearm. And also a neutral wrist will have your thumb and your pinky in alignment. So this is actually considered a neutral wrist. Hopefully you guys can really see that. When you put your hands up, you notice that your thumb and your pinky is actually not in the same plane. But when you tilt it a little bit to about 45 degrees, you notice that your thumb and your pinky are now in the same plane. That is what's considered a neutral wrist. Your hips are slightly higher than your knees and your thighs. So the full body weight should be distributed evenly on your seat. Comfortable space, about three inches between the edge of a seat and the back of your knees. And I encourage you guys, if you are sitting in a chair, uh, you know, um, you're sitting at your kitchen table or your desk chair, like I'm sitting at my desk chair, try it. See if you can get your body parts that are listed on here to look like this and see how you feel. See if this is how you practice when you're at home. I mean, sorry, when you're at work. Your knees should be slightly apart and your feet should be flat on the floor with a wide base. One of my amazing students is about like 4'10", 4'9". She is a beautiful girl, but she is very tiny. So her feet dangles. So we put her feet on the legs of the base of the chair. So that way she's also securing a neutral working position in that manner. And sometimes that's what we mean when we have to make it work for our bodies, right? So the do's and don'ts of positioning. Your head should be tilted zero to 15 degrees, okay? You don't wanna go past that. Do not have your head tipped too forward or your one tilt to the side. If anyone has ever seen any photos of me, this is how I look in every single photo. My head is always tilted to the side. Why, I don't know. That's just how I do the photos. Can't tell you why. Lean forward slightly from the waist. You know, you pretend like you have on a backboard. You're hinging from your hips, right? Don't curve around your back at all, okay? If you have to lean forward, that's what you're doing leaning forward you're not hunching forward oh oh sorry i went in the wrong direction hmm. keep those shoulders even okay don't put those shoulders up in your ears pretend you're always wearing beautiful dangling chandelier earrings let everyone see your earrings okay keep those keep those shoulders down Your arms should stay parallel to the floor. If you got to practice being a little T-Rex, practice being a little T-Rex, right? Don't extend more than you need to. Try not to have, try to have an angle of less than 60 degrees. And pinky side of the palm is slightly lower than the thumb side, okay? Your palm should be parallel. So you, this is not neutral. That's neutral, okay? It should be, palms should be nice and flat. Poor ergonomic conditions, risk factors. Uh, someone in the chat when we first started already, say, already said it, my body hurts, right? Like we can't, we, can't, we can't work like this. We can't, neck, shoulder, wrist, hand, lower back, psychological, we can't work like this, all right? Our, our awkward postures and poor positioning that's what develops poor ergonomic working conditions. Sitting too long for a long period of time. We constantly do repetitive movements. We gotta break it up a little bit. Excessive use of small hand muscles. That's, that's literally what we're using every day to perform tasks. And constant force. I go back to that distal of number 16 where that calculus is. We're like, turn, turn your head this way and you, we going for it, right? And we're applying, we're bearing down on our fulcrum. We're applying lateral pressure and we are scaling and getting that 
getting that calculus off. And then when we get it off, it's like music to our ears and if no one else can hear the music, just us. So let's talk about MSDs, musculoskeletal disorders. A condition where part, parts of the skeletal system, the muscles, the tendons, the nerves are injured over time. Our work requires frequent and repetitive movements and it causes stresses to certain parts of the body. Hands, wrists, elbows, back, neck, shoulders, lions, tigers, bears, oh my. All of these are common body parts that hygienists experience pain or discomfort. And we're gonna talk about some of them. And as you can see here, 64 to 93% of dental professionals have listed some sort of musculoskeletal disorder. I'm gonna go through some of the common ones that we experience. The first one being TOS, which is thoracic outlet syndrome. And TOS is a group of disorders that occur when blood vessels or nerves in a space between your rib and collarbone are compressed, that's the thoracic outlet. And this can cause shoulder and neck pain and numbness in your fingers. The next one, rotator cuff tendonitis. It occurs over time after repeated stress on the rotator cuff. Symptoms of rotator cuff tendonitis include pain, swelling in the shoulder area, limited motion, and you feel some weakness in your arm. The next one, pronator syndrome. It occurs when the median nerve is compressed in the upper forearm. PSC typically causes an aching pain in the forearm. The hands, muscles are weakened. Grip and fine motor movements may be affected. Numbness and tingling may occur in the thumb and index finger. I always say, keep in your pocket a stress ball. And every time, you know, you're finished with a patient, you're turning over your room, keep that stress ball in your pocket. Start working them out. Start working things out, right? The common, common, common syndrome that I feel everyone across the nation <laughs> has issues with is carpal tunnel. And this is a very common condition that causes pain, numbness, and tingling in the hands and arms. The condition occurs when one of the major nerves to the hand, which is a median nerve, is squeezed or compressed as it travels through the wrist. Now, you know, with our repetitive movement of, if you, rem if you remember your um, instrumentation class, right? The force that we're doing is like if we're turning a doorknob, yeah? Ulnar nerve entrapment is the entrapment of the ulnar nerve and it can occur when there's direct pressure on the nerve for a prolonged period of time. And a pinched on the nerve, nerve, excuse me, can result in tingling, pain, and numbness. And then the last one I'm going to talk to you about is tenosynovitis. And this is inflammation of the tendon sheath where a muscle connects to the bone. It's a painful condition caused by repetitive use of the hands and wrists. And what are we using? Hands and wrists. Symptoms include pain, swelling, and difficulty moving the affected joint. Now, I was diagnosed with carpal tunnel syndrome probably, I want to say maybe like eight years into being a hygienist. And thankfully, I did not have to have cortisone shots. I did not have to have surgery. What was recommended was a lot of um, rest and a brace. And when I tell you I took rest and a brace seriously and ran with it, because I, I want to give the injections. I do not want to receive the injections, okay? Now let's talk about what we're gonna teach our patients. First thing we need to remember when we're teaching our patients is that they are human beings. They are not mannequins. They can move right, left, up, down, center. Move these patients. What else can also be moved is the patient chair up, down, move the chairs, okay? Move, move, move. I would rather you move the patient and the chair before you start compromising your body positioning. Patient corporation makes it possible for the dental hygienist to practice with less stress and strain. 
to prevent musculoskeletal discomfort and pain and deliver patient, better patient care. The distance from the patient's oral cavity should be adjusted to your elbow height. Remember that we're not all the same height, right? So that's gonna differ. The working distance, if you're using magnification, which I strongly recommend, loops, from clinician's eyes to the patient's oral cavity when a clinician is seated in neutral position should be within 15 to 22 inches. Luckily, this amazing webinar has, is being sponsored by uh, UNIVET with CE being given to us by Dental Laser Integrations. And shortly, we're going to meet with Devin, who is the loop guy. I love his Instagram name. And he's going to talk to us a little bit more about that in a second when I, when I finish our presentation. But this is detriment. Having magnification really sets you on a high bar for maintaining proper ergonomics. Asking patients to move, move them, move them, ask them, and make adjustments to your chair. I tell you, I can't tell you many times I walk past my, my students in their clinics and they're like all tangled up in a web and the patient is head at 12 o'clock, just still as a board. I'm like, if you don't move this patient's head right or left, what are you doing? Why are we doing this? Let's talk about some chair side stretches. So if you have been sitting for 25 minutes with listening to me ramble on about ergonomics, maybe you want to get up and you want to try some of these chair side stretches. I definitely recommend these stretches while you are in between patients during patient care. Okay. You stand, the first one shows you, um, you're standing with your feet hip width apart, hands on your lower back, and you just wanna push your hips forward, okay? The second one, or sorry, B, has you sitting upright on your operated chair with your back firmly pressed against the chair. You place your arms behind you, palms facing down and raise your arms to the ceiling. I strongly recommend if you have your smartphone, please feel free to take a photo of this. You can remember this, print this out, put this inside of your cabinets, super useful so you don't, so you don't forget. Um, C, sitting with your operated chair, firm, feet firmly on the floor, fold at the waist, start to lean over your legs, letting your head hang heavy. This is a good release for those muscles. This is one of my favorite ones to do. And then sometimes I might fall asleep, but don't tell anyone. Um, D is sit on operated chair with feet firmly on the floor, clasp your hands together, palms facing outward and pull your hands away, tucking in those abdominal muscles. And then the last one, which is what I call raise the roof. I might be telling my age when I say that, but raise your arms above your head, facing the ceiling, raise shoulders into ears and just pull, like if you're trying to literally raise the roof, okay? Do this as many times as you, as you need to in order, out of order, pick one, pick four, do them all. Do what you need to do to create longevity for yourself, okay? Super, super important. I cannot stress this enough. And let's talk about some reminders. Always assume a neutral balanced body position. Make adjustments to patient's chair and dental equipment to complete periodontal instrumentation. Bring what you need to you. Do not ex stretch and expand to get what you need, okay? Have your bracket tray close enough that if you need to change your instrument, your bracket tray is not allowing you to extend too far away, okay? Set, your, set yourselves up for success. Do not alter your position just to get the job done, okay? I know we want to get the Dissola 16. We want, I know it, trust me, I want to get it too. I need my patient to turn. We have to make those patients move. Okay, thank you so much. I just wanna go over in the future, you can come back and join us. We will be having a second part to this webinar. It's gonna be called Dental Hygiene Fit. We're gonna talk about mind and body connections. We're gonna talk about concepts and goals for ergonomic practice, early identification of ergonomic risk factors, early identification of mental fatigue, prevention of factors, prevention of mental fatigue. I'm so, so super excited. Thank you so much for joining us. 
If there are any questions, now is the time. I am definitely, feel free to also capture my email if you wanna discuss anything any further, or if you want me to send you photos of Taffy, my dog who is literally still laying in the same position since I started 28 minutes ago. So she doesn't do anything, she does nothing. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen. See if there are some questions that I need to answer. However, I am super, super, super excited to now turn the show over to Devin from Univet. He's gonna talk to you guys about his amazing loot company. I myself have a pair of Univet loots. They are amazing and they're kind of like sleek and cool i feel like a cool kid on the block when i wear my univet I'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna lie so i'm super excited about that so mr devin i will let you take it away and speak to these amazing people that we have here thank you anika univet has brought for you today optics illumination systems medical eyewear and digital cameras using the finest materials the world has ever known. Not only will these products dramatically improve your sight, but they'll really do something for your vision. Now, this offer holds true whether you have 20-20 vision or perfect eyesight, and it comes from one of the best optic companies in the world. Now, I wanna emphasize a couple of things. First of all, these products are amazing and they're a little pricey. So if you're looking for the most economical loop out there, we may not be the right choice for you, but, I can promise you after using them for some time, you'll see things that have been there all along that others have simply overlooked. So if you wanna focus clearly on your goals and achieve the successes you've dreamed about, then we'd be honored to help you on your path. Good evening. My name is Devin Thormisgaard. I'm the National Sales Manager for Univet Optics here in the United States. It's an honor and pleasure to be with you this evening. A Little bit about myself with the Thormis Guards. We live in San Diego, California. My wife, Stephanie, is an occupational therapist that specializes in kids under three with developmental disorders, mostly autism, tongue ties, and feeding needs. Uh, our daughter, Eliana, had a release of her cheek and her posterior tongue when she was a couple weeks old. She just turned one and she's doing awesome. Uh, our son, Jackson, just turned three. He loves trash trucks. He's obsessed with speed bumps right now. And he has a really good golf swing and he definitely didn't get it from me. Uh, this is gonna be my 13th year in the dental industry. It's amazing how quickly it's gone by. The dental industry is all I've known since graduating college. About half that time since spent in optics. But before my life in dental began, I was an Eagle Scout, a marketing major and an MBA graduate born and raised in Southern California. When I'm not working with my awesome team here in North America and hanging out with my family, I'm working on our backyard and house landscaping. I love practicing Brazilian jiu-jitsu, trail running, playing guitar, podcasts, and books. But honestly, work and family take up most of my time these days. Obviously, we spent the last what, half hour with Anika talking about the ergonomic benefits of using loops. However, I just wanted to go over it another couple of reasons why they help us help you as clinicians do your very best. First and foremost, you know, they really help with our diagnostic capability. Simply put, we can't treat what we don't see. And it's honestly as simple as that. So having a good high quality loop not only protects your body from workplace related injury, but it also gives your patients the highest quality of care they deserve. You know, the last reason I wanted to bring up why we use loops is career and financial longevity. Like Anika brought up, it's it's tough to see, you know, 60 to 90% of clinicians out there have some type of workplace related injury. And that's, it's it's tough to see that. But, you know, on the the earning side of it, right? If you, if you can't work, you can't create financial freedom for yourself in the future. So it's obviously really important that we take good care of ourselves by investing in the technologies that we use. So speaking of investing in technology, I wanna show you a video of some friends of ours here in Southern California. Let's see here.
So that was Paul. I also wanted to share a video from our friend Veronica. She's also a hygienist in Southern California. Hi, Devin. Sorry to interrupt you. So I don't think there's our audio when you're on your video. Oh, what a bummer. Okay. Well, we'll just skip this then. Thanks for letting me know. Okay. So you can see my PowerPoint, is that right? All right. Well, these two awesome hygienists had never invested in loops before. And you can check out their video testimonials on my Instagram. It's at your loop guy. If you're not wearing loops or you already wear loops, yeah, check out their videos using optics, basically change their life and the way they practice dental hygiene. So I just want to talk about the two types of loops that are out there typically today. There's Galilean and prismatic loops. Our Galilean loops are typically shorter barrel loops and the lens that's facing the patient is curved. So that's a really easy way for you to tell what type of loop you have or maybe someone in your office has. They're light and compact, almost no learning curve. You put them on, they're gonna fit you almost right away. Excellent visual comfort. Typically speaking, they're more economical than prismatic loops and they typically max out at magnification at 3.5. So here at Univet, we have 2.5, 3, and 3.5. Now in the, prismatic in the prismatic scope, the light's passing through a prism and what that allows you to do is use an optic with more magnification. Typically speaking, they start around three and a half and at Univet, they go up to five. Okay, so we have a three, four and five here at Univet. They're gonna give you the most magnification compared to the two types of loops and there's no optical aberrations. I'm gonna explain what that is in a little bit. It's really important for what you do. Typically speaking, there's, there's less depth and field with these and they're a little bit longer and heavier. So when we talk about what separates a great Galilean loop from the good, right? We have this working distance, the distance from your eye to the mouth, which is your working site. Now, typically your area of, of work, right? is dictated by magnification. So like your two and a half is gonna give you like a basketball or maybe like a honeydew melon size of volume. And as we go up in magnification, that area gets getting smaller and smaller. Now, the higher quality of the optic, the better glass, the better engineering, the better coating they put on the lens, you're gonna get more of that width and more of that depth back. And that's important to you because like Anika said, right, it's gonna give you uh, more ability to sit in this neutral working position without having to adjust your body and your patient's body. Essentially, just allows you to work more efficiently without moving yourself. I wanna talk a little bit about the products and what separates Univet from a lot of the other amazing companies here in North America. First of all, we put a special coating on our lenses. It's called an achromatic coating. And one uh, deficiency of Galilean loops as I mentioned, the lens that's facing the patient is curved. Okay, it's called the objective lens. At least that's what we call it, Univet. And what that does is it causes aberrations and uh, blurriness on the perimeter of the loop. Okay, so one thing we're known for at Univet is really mitigating those uh, aberrations, we call them, with a special coating. Now, if you look at these two red arrows, you can see two things. One, in between the two circles, you see kind of that blurriness. And then if you ever look at a piece of graph paper with your loops on, on the peripheries, you see that they, they start to curve and these are aberrations. So you could think of these aberrations like flaws in a diamond, right? And that the less flaws that you have, the clearer the diamond and the more expensive it is, right? So you know that all over the world, we're known for having exceptional edge to edge clarity and it's part of the special coating that we put on them but every loop in the world is gonna be clear down the middle. What separates them is this edge to edge clarity. So we just launched this beautiful, elegant new frame. It's called the One. And I wanted to share with you because it's elegant, beautiful, and sleek. If there's any aesthetic people out there, the lens shape has a golden proportion, just like in teeth and in nature. So these are very aesthetic frame, very comfortable. And one of the really cool things I like about it is that the coating on the black is the same as 
the coating they put on Ferrari engines. How cool is that? It's part of being made in Italy, I guess. It comes in another color, a desert sage. It's very elegant, sleek, and beautiful as well. We also have a color kit where you can exchange the colors out. It'll fit all of our magnifications, all of our prescriptions, no issue there. It's very, very comfortable. I'm so excited to get this back in the bag and bring it to you. It also comes with a gasket, which essentially is taking our infection control to the next level. This gasket is very easy to remove and it comes with every one frame. We also make Overloop face shields, the 701 and 710. We use proprietary coating on these lenses to minimize glare and airflow is extremely efficient with both these. Uh, your loop and light will fit behind the shield, no problem. Next product, speaking of ergonomics and diagnostic capabilities, I just wanted to share with you is our EOS Next that came out last month. I know you're looking at these two balls thinking, is this the next uh, COVID strain? It's not, don't worry. These are just uh, examples we use to demonstrate CRI, which is an acronym for Color Rendering Index. So in uh, aesthetic dentistry, right, and in, in hygiene, right, our ability to diagnose and assess color tissue and shade is really important. So for example, uh, an aesthetic dentist that's doing a lot of veneers, he'll often take, they'll often take their patient outside to do the shade. And that's because the lights in the operatory and the lights on the LEDs aren't reflective of the natural sunlight outside. So when they, when they send the shade to the lab and they seat the final, maybe on like a single central, the shade's off, it doesn't match. That's because the CRI in the office is low, right? A lot of these medical lights, they're around 70, maybe 80. So we just came out with this CRI 90 light and essentially that's gonna give you as close to sunlight as possible without bringing your patient out. Now for hygiene, when we're diagnosing tissue health and enamel, this is gonna be really helpful in determining uh, whether or not there's issues we need to bring forward and advise the patient on. We also have a wireless light. My favorite feature about it is that it's touch touchless. So you just create a shadow over the top on either side if you're left or right handed and the light will turn on and off. There's other ways to turn it off like tapping the battery and the frame. Uh, and you can also turn it upside down and the light will shut off. One of the things that Univet's known for on our LEDs is having this flawless, beautiful spot. Okay, if you have an LED light out there, it's probably awesome, but bring it to a meeting and let us show you ours and you'll see the difference. I absolutely love our LED lights and all the light nerds out there drool over our spot because it's the best out there. The last awesome product I wanna talk to you about is this tiny digital camera. Okay, this is a 4K camera, the highest resolution possible, and it weighs only 14 grams, and you can mount it to your loop, you can mount it to the overhead light, you can mount it to the ceiling, you can mount it anywhere, and it's going to allow you to teach or transmit the highest resolution possible, 4K, from the eyes of the clinician. So whether you're an educator or an influencer, someone who just likes to document their cases made for patient education, this is a tool you don't want to live without. So we have people joining us from all over the world. We're super grateful for that. So if you're interested in some ways to get some Univet products in your hands, on your face, scan this QR code and you'll be prompted to just put in some basic information. This QR code is also going to be used to get your CE. However, if you're at an event or you schedule a meeting with a Univet representative, you're also gonna get a promotion for, get this 13 hour CE laser training from Dental Laser Integrations for just 99 bucks. Normally it's $700, you're gonna use the code UNIVET and both these promotions are good till the end of June. So just as a reminder, scan this QR code to cash in on your CE and let us know what you thought about the webinar. Before I hand it off to Elaine to just talk about the CE and how to take advantage of it. Just wanted to share a little story with you. So this duck walks into a grocery store. He's getting his cornflakes. He's getting his bread. He fills up his shopping cart, gets to the checkout stand. And the checker says, how do you want to pay for this? Cash or charge? And the duck says, I'm kind of in a hurry. Can you put it on my bill? 
Thanks for your time, everybody. Take it away, Elaine. Devin, we're all laughing over here. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Can everybody turn on your camera and just clap? Because I don't think you, we might not realize how much effort goes into putting together a presentation that is engaging and fun. And Anika and Devin are both extremely well versed presenters, very engaging. And thank you guys so much for being present. Um, first of all, we're wrapping up in just a minute or two, but I want, I've been watching the comments write in. I want everybody to write in one or two takeaways that really resonated with you. I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it. What really resonated with you guys of everything? And let's look at what Anika said. Anything from Anika's presentation resonate with you guys? I'll tell you the first thing that I wrote down was if you're not in proper working posture, also known as the neutral working position, you are doing the patient a disservice. And that really resonated with me. And at the moment that she said that, I was like literally hunched over like that. So um, we don't even realize how bad our posture is until we you know, start seeing these um, nice visuals of what actual proper posture was. Importance of stretch breaks, move positions between patients, keep a stress ball, exactly. So while we're looking at these uh, comments in the chats, and thank you guys for sharing your takeaways, also share from Devin, we cannot treat what we do not see. And our ability to assess the color, tissue tone, and texture, and shade can be affected by the quality of your loops. So I want you guys to think about how long you've been practicing with your loop. Does it need to be updated? Um, have you not been practicing with loops a while and you're scared to kind of make that transition? I know somebody in the chat asked about cost. Please, everybody take the moment right now. It takes two minutes to scan that QR code and make sure that you guys, one, get the CE credit and the deadline to submit this is tomorrow at noon Pacific. OK, so tomorrow at noon Pacific, this takes two minutes. And to reach out, reach out to Anika. She's an incredible educator. She's not just a pillar of the community, but she makes herself available to mentor, to help uh, guide anybody who's interested in learning more, um, namely about, about ergonomics, but also about how to get more involved in your dental community. So please don't hesitate to reach out to Anika. And please take down Devin's information with Univet so that you guys can get your special discounts, special promos. I hate that word discount, but get your special promos on your on your loop equipment. Thank you. I appreciate it. Beautiful. And I there was a question that I do want to address that was in the chat in reference to um, the saddle chairs. So. As long as you're maintaining proper ergonomic condition, you can use a saddle chair or a chair with a back, your, you know, your traditional chair. What makes ergonomics ergonomics is the positioning of your body position. Now, saddle chairs do allow you to automatically sit upright. So if you have a saddle chair, please utilize your saddle chair but just make sure that you are putting your body in the correct positioning. Your head is, is aligned with your spine. Your shoulders are relaxed. You're not hunched, you know? So you have to make sure that your body is aligned because you can sit in any chair and slouch and shrug your shoulders and lean your head to one side. You can. So it's just about making sure that you position your body in the proper ergonomic stance. And I believe that was the only question that I saw in reference to ergonomics. If there are any more, please feel free to put those in the chat. I know there were questions in reference to the cost. Like Elaine said, please feel free to um, scan this QR code and you'll get all the information that's necessary for you as far as um, cost. I didn't even know about that tiny little camera, Devin. You were holding out on me. I didn't see that little tiny, I, I saw everything else, the fancy lights, 
the new frames. You did not mention that little tiny camera. It's holding out, holding out on a sister. I don't appreciate it. Say something for you. It's amazing. <laughs> I can't wait to bring it out to you next time we're out there. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll give it to you. We can bring it to you. Okay, great. Because I want to play with a camera. That sounds amazing. Um, so everyone, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your time for spending these 50 minutes with us. I'm truly, truly grateful. If there are any more questions or any more comments, please feel free to put those and drop those in the chat. Otherwise, you are you've been giving your directives on how to obtain your CE. Everyone knows we need CE for licensure status, so please make sure. Um, Naima, there's a question. Let me just read this. Um, I work in public health, and we use different chairs every week. Is there anything different I should do? So, and I'm hope I'm saying this right, Naima. I, I apologize if I am not saying that correctly. But because um, I've also worked in public health, and I had those, I used to bring my own chair that I got from IKEA. It's not that. It's not. It's not a comfortable chair. But I made sure that I focused on my positioning, made sure that I focused on how I needed to sit in order to get the job done. As long as the chair has wheels and as long as the patient is human, it is possible to procure proper ergonomics condition. You just have to, it's like muscle memory. You just have to keep on practicing. You feel yourself coming out of alignment get yourself right back into alignment, okay? But I do recommend that you try, because like I said, I got that chair from Ikea. I can't remember, I just remember it was red, but I don't remember the, the SKU, so I can't tell you what it was. But a chair with wheels, beneficial. Yeah, Naima, yes, you want a chair with wheels, that's beneficial. I used to carry my own little chair when I do public health, my little low backpack, it, you know, I could break it down and then put it back together and I'm not handy. So if I could do it, anybody could do it. And I would, I would utilize that chair. So you need a chair with wheels because it's very, very hard, very hard. Yes, I'm glad I was able to solve that question for you. Great, good, good, good. And I see any, yes, Ikea. Yep, I got it from my Ikea those instructions were, it, you know, it wasn't hard. And I, I key instructions are like very hard. Those were not hard. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Um, any other questions before we let you guys go and enjoy the rest of your Thursday, wherever time zone you are in? Seven, Elaine, is there anything else you would like to say to these amazing humans that came out and joined us today? Gosh, I appreciate you joining us from all over. It means a lot. Hope it was valuable and make sure to join us for the next webinar and share our flyer. If you know people that are interested, help us spread the word. We want to reach as many people as possible. Amazing. Thank you Thank so you. much. All right. Thank you guys. You guys have an amazing Thursday. So happy to have seen some faces and hear some names and see some names that I know. Otherwise, you guys enjoy. Have a great Thursday. Thank you, guys. Yay. That was a hit.